Attorney, uh, marami pong ganap ngayon eh, no? At uh, hmm. isa na dito recently, yung, well, nag-post ako kahapon na ako kasi, bilang Pilipino, alam mo naman, <laughs> romantic. Uh, may sinabi kasi si former president, uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, regarding yung, because of this ongoing uh, move, to change our constitution no to change mm -hmm. our the basic law of the land eh para sabi niya eh dapat siguro isabay na o pwede naman pala kung may ganyang sinasabing people's initiative di why not uh, yung matagal na rin gusto ng Mindanao na you know uh magsisid o idaan sa ganitong sinasabing referendum o people's initiative kung gusto rin ng Mindanao na humiwalay na sa ating republika. Hello mo. Oh, yeah. Uh, ang tingin ko dyan is na, whether or not, uh, kung gano'ng kaseryoso siya tungkol dito, medyo hindi pa maliwanag. Uh, kasi, alam natin, in this administration, di ba may attempt din na baguhin yung saligang batas. Yes. At na doon sa kanyang plataforma ay ang, ano, ang federalismo. Yes. Yung konting history tungkol doon. Yung federalismo, kaya yun naging bahagi ng kampanya kasi wala namang sumusuporta sa kanya sa mga congressional districts. Ang may ang congressman lang na sumuporta sa kanya si Congressman Alvarez. Siguro may isa o dalawa pa. Pero in his first zone, sinabi niya talaga, "Um, palakpak kayo diyan, wala naman sa inyo sumuporta sa akin, hindi ba nang kaya ganito, ganito." Kaya talaga naniningil siya. Naalala ko 'yun. Naalala <laughs> niyo? Oo. Oo. So, kumuha siya ng suporta sa local governments. Ngayon, merong ilang mga grupo dyan sa mga LGU candidates at the time na ang gusto nilang isulong either greater autonomy para sa mga local governments or yun na nga, the dream is federalism. So, and since mayor siya, naiintindihan niya, mas madali nga siyang makapag-connect ano eh, makapag, uh, with the mayors, di ba? So, um, that became part of his campaign. Kasi nga, ito nga ang gustong isulong from the local government, from those who were supporting him. Okay, fast forward, in the Duterte administration, hindi siya basta-basta nag-propose ng pagbabago ng saligang batas, nag-create siya ng komisyon. Yes. Yung komisyon na yun ay para pag-aralan yung pagbabago sa saligang batas, not limited dun sa federalismo. Yes. Oh, okay, oh, for so many months, grabe ang tindi ng awayan dyan ha, yung, ano, yung the debates and, and all that. Matitindi. I, I recall, attorney, bumisita pa tayo dyan sa ano, di ba? Oh, uh, sa PICC. Sa PICC. Because uh, they were uh, hold up there at nang kinunvin sila as a constitutional uh, ano, nga, assembly, eh, nandun sila, ano? Yun mm -hmm. ang parang naging de facto office nila uh -huh. while they are deliberating uh, the, the changes that uh, they would want to see. Uh, pero, at with, with what you said, na yun ang ginawa ni former president nung nung pag pagkaupo pa lang niya. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, niya sa proseso, di ba? So, yeah. uh, hindi niya Oh, hindi niya ito yung tipong ito gusto ko. So kailangan ito mangyari. That's it. No, that's uh -oh. So after aral, yeah. walang masaya doon yeah. sa mga provisions na isinusulong nila. Uh Oo. -oh. Munta yan sa Kongreso, lalong hindi masaya ang Kongreso. Oh, okay. And so it died a natural death. Pero na-fulfill naman niya yung campaign promise niya na at least titignan niya ang pagsulong dito sa ano sa Saligong Batas. Okay, recent mm. day. So, mm -hmm. major concern ni Presidente, dating Pangulo, lalong-lalo na dun sa una niyang speech dun sa prayer rally, mm. ang tutulan niya dito at consistent naman siya ay yung pagbabago ng Saligong Batas. Lalong-lalo na sa paraan ng People's Initiative. Kung pinakinggan mo both his speeches, ang nire-reklamo niya is Saan ang galing ito? Kayo mm -hmm. kayo lang yan. Mm -hmm. And there's no process involved. Yung people's initiative nga. Halata naman kung sino yung nagpa nagtutulak noon. At pangalawa, magko-constituent assembly. In all of these things, nasa ng tao doon? Nasa yeah. ng tao pa yan? Sila-sila lang nag-uusap. And yeah. hindi exempt ang presidente, ang current president, doon sa batikos ni FPRD. Kasi yeah. tignan mo yung nangyari. Tama siya eh. Na, anong muna nangyari? Nagreklamo. Na, so nag-PI. Nagreklamo si Senator Mix kay Presidente Marcos. Ano yung sagot ni Presidente Marcos? Um, sige, ganito lang. It's too divisive yung PI, so why don't you do this? Uh, Senator Mix, why don't you pass a resolution to be ano, to, the joint resolution, both houses, and propose to change the economic provisions of the Constitution? Tapos so, sinabi na Senate ang manguna. Oo. Yeah. So, given, in fairness, they did it. Both houses oh, did it. Yeah. So, hindi tumigil yung PI. Okay, bumalik si Senator Mix. 
So, sabi ni, ang pangako naman, this second time around the President is, I will talk, I will try to talk to, try to talk pa eh, uh, to Congress na ipatigil yan. Hmm. You know, that statement sounded so unleader-like, di ba? Parang makikiusap pa siya na ganito. Hmm. So, so, in all of this, mayroong move para baguhin ng saligang batas, pero hindi tayo kasali. Parang sila-sila lang. In fact, yung PI na provision na gusto nilang baguhin, eh, para mas malakas ang Kongreso, yung House of Representatives, pwede silang umariba na sila lang. Hindi tayo kasali, ha? Wala. Sina nang makakapag-propose? At syempre, kargado na yon pag sila na yung nag-propose. Walang, ano, walang talk about a con-con. Walang education yeah. about the campaign. Wala. Although, although, attorney, pag sinabi kasing, ang, I think, ang binibenta ng Congress dyan, ng House of Representatives, is the fact that they are the House of Representatives. Meaning, They represent already the people. But yeah. yun nga eh, but the thing is, parang this 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 time they are ramming it down our throats. Correct. Then diba? it no. They who it is they who represent us. Yes. Pero kung sila nagkampanya, may may usapan bang ganun? Yes. Sinabi ba nila na oh, magbaguhin namin yung economic provisions sa saligang batas? Walang ganun. Besides, ang pagbabago ng saligang batas, kaya nga sa konkon Mm -hmm. We elect representatives precisely for that purpose. Kasi But, pag nag elect tayo ng at-large dun sa ating regular elections, hindi kasama yun. When we elect them, we elect them for the purpose of making laws. Walang kasama dun yung pagbabago ng saligang batas. Although we know that there will be a constituent assembly, it's possible. Ang mas malala niyan is, but they magically came up with these provisions, itong economic provisions, 1, 2, and 3, ganyan. Hiningi ba natin yun? Yeah. Kaya natin hindi yun. And even those who are clamoring against the 60-40 don't even understand what the 60-40 is all about. Hindi nababasa yung portion na yun ng saligang batas. So, paano tayo magbibigay ng informed consent dun sa kanilang hinihingi? Okay. Now so, that you brought that up, uh -huh. uh, let me also parang refresh our memory na. Uh -huh. when, when you were, when you, you started with the administration, di ba? When it, when it came to power. Yes. Nasa, nasa legislative agenda ba itong cha-cha? Actually, wala. Kasi, Yun eh, di ba? In 2023, the president was asked kung magcha-cha-cha ba, and he said, uh, that's not a priority right now. I actually asked him in 2022, bago upo pa lang kami. Yes. So, di ba, Mr. President, we have to, ano, you're going to be addressing the Congress. Uh, people are asking, are you proposing charter change? That's not a priority right now. We still have to fix things before we can even consider that. So, yeah, it's a good thing. 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 It's a good Mm -hmm. yes. Pero in sinabi nga dyan na by December 2023, uh -huh. mag na ng mga signature, tapos all the way to magkakaroon na ng uh, deliberation in Congress with regards to the provisions and kung ano yung mga changes na ipapasok. And ang nakaka-ano dyan, attorney, they have a July, a June deadline? Tama ba? Uh, yes. Actually, yung timetable na yun, galing yan kay Senator Aimee, tapos mayroong... Part of that is in RA 6735. May mm -hmm. X number of months. So, kunwari, uh, tanggap yan ng COMELEC yung petition, then they are given oh. three months. In three months period na yan, yun yung campaign period. And yeah. then, referendum after that one. So, The referendum will be like, ano ba to? Uh, isasabay sa election? That's the ideal situation. Kaya lang may time requirement eh. Oh. Sa so, unless Congress comes up with a law, that will allow them to join the to mm. to include the referendum at the next elections yun, yun. Uh, it will be this year yung referendum yeah so we go back to the question attorney why is it that this is being all of a sudden this became the legislative agenda it's it, not the only, only, <laughs> it's only not, no. it was not in the president's legislative agenda at all oh, oh. but it but, is not the agenda Kasi, diba? oo, ang masama niyan is, you know, something like changing the constitution requires at least public approval. Yung may consensus man lang. E dito, uh -huh. si, the earliest uh, statement was in December 11, si Speaker Martin Romaldez said, 
Ano ba yan? Ayun, yun nga, yeah, I think it's time to ano, change the constitution. So, we'll get, ano, we'll, we'll change it so that we're voting jointly and we can do that through people's initiative. And then afterwards, the provisions to constituent assembly. So, yun, it was mapped out in, in December as early as that. So just just to provide context, no, because the reason I brought this up, I brought up the charter changes because ito yung context ni Presidente Duterte, ni former President Duterte. That's uh -oh. why he brought up the one Mindanao thing. Yeah. This, what the the context of all of this is that it's I don't, they're trying to do this to us. They are spending enormous amounts of money, people's money. You know, they they uh, the president has been traveling a lot. Uh, very little work has been done. So he is calling out the administration because. Naririnig din naman niya yan sa atin eh. Mm. Suddenly, sa dami ng problema natin, and, and I constantly repeat this on my vlogs, uh, mahal ang pagkain, mag, nagmahal ang tubig, uh, kuryente, mm. uh, transportation, it's still in chaos. Uh, internet, patay hindi yung internet natin, hindi di siya naganap. So, mm. um, the traffic is still bad. The roads have, aren't, haven't been completed. Infrastructure is delayed by 30 mm. years. Mm. So, no, maybe 20 years na lang kasi 30 years pa na ni Bigong. Mm. So, uh, in, this, in, in the face of all this, charter change talaga yung sinulong. Diba? Eh, in yeah. fact, one of the provisions in the charter change proposal is to make permanent the Public Utilities Act. Alam niya yung problema? It's mm. in the Supreme Court now because isinama nila sa Public Utilities Act, hello, ang airport, which is imbued with national security interests. Relation, so... Uh, it's too, yeah. it's too dangerous for the public safety to just suddenly allow foreigners to operate, to build, and, and Lord knows what else yeah. in, in airports. In, in the face of, of, of what they claim are to be te tensions in this part of the world, mm. we're just going to give these things away. So, yun yung point dito. Sa dami ng problema, charter change talaga. So, yeah. si Presidente Duterte was adding to that. Ang sinasabi niya is, you know, kung hindi kayo mag-aayos, I will look into, and, and please, you know, everybody calm down. He said, I will look into the possibility of an independent Mindanao. Yes. Okay? So he's careful. Walang secessionist statements. Walang inciting to sedition dito. Yes. Pag-aaralan daw. And he was careful. He passed it on to Congressman Alvarez, who said, we will first educate the people. Mm. So and then followed up by President, President Duterte, former President Duterte saying, matagal pa ito. Mm. But the point has been made. Yeah. Ang sabi niya is, you know, I don't see any changes coming from this administration and there is a possibility that whoever comes after this administration, assuming that it goes through the regular course, will probably be the same. Yeah. So, ano yeah. yung mabigat yung statement na yun, ha? it already takes into consideration na hindi si Inday ang uupo, yes, uh, uh, yung, yung black ops nila, and so on. Yeah, well, with regards to that statement nga of the former president, um, of course, if I were to like uh, uh, try to understand the sympath, uh, the um, the emotional, ano uh, of or the the feelings of yung mga kababayan natin sa Mindanao, I mean I would understand. I can understand why they would want that. Why would they have that kind of sentiment? Because parang alam mo, attorney, parang feeling ko ano lang din yan, eh. It's the same as me uh, wanting a better Philippines. Na parang kapareho dapat tayo ng mga kapit bahay natin na napagiwan na tayo. Di ba? Na, I mean, masyado na tayong nalugmok, masyado na tayong iwan na iwan. And ngayon nga, ang developments like Cambodia is, is like overtaking us already. Imagine Cambodia. So, I, I can, ano, no, I can empathize with the Mindanaoans when they say, ama ba yan ako, Mindanaoans? Uh, I mean, I can empathize with them and I can understand and I can really see where they're coming from, yung mga ating mga kababayan in Mindanao, when they say na, Oh, gusto namin to dahil matagal nang matagal nang napabayaan ng Mindanao and yung mga pera sayang naman yung pondo ng gobyerno na hindi naman napapun masyadong cent centrist o imperialistic ang palakad sa Maynila na hindi naman talaga na tutuunan ng nabibigyan ng pansin ng Mindanao which is really you know they they are valid no no they are valid sentiments they are valid uh, uh commentaries <clears throat> uh but yun nga I, I also tend to subscribe to that ano nga ni former president that, you know, maybe it's just a trigger. Maybe it's something that he would want lang to say out of yung, out of parang not desperation, but because of what is happening right now, eh kung baga, kung, kung yan lang naman pala ang agenda nyo, eh di, 
Sabayin na lang natin itong ganito, di ba? Something like that. Frustration yun. At oh. the same time, it's also strategic. Kasi yeah. tignan na nangyayari. It oh. galvanizes the, ano, those who are in Mindanao. Uh, the possibility of this happening galvanizes them into action. Yeah. At the same time, uh, those of us in Mindanao and Luzon might possibly feel threatened at this outcome. Correct. And so the stakes are higher. Kung baga, what he was doing was upping the ante. Yeah. Ayaw nyo ha? O sige. Tutuloy nyo yung charter change niyan? O sige. Pagpasok ng charter change niyan, ipapasok namin yung possibility na ganito. Uh-huh. Now the stakes are higher. Gusto nilang ituloy? Magpapaano tayo? Magpapropose din tayo ng charter change. On that level. On mm-hmm. the level of uh, setting a referendum or a plebiscite on, on the situation of Mindanao and so on. So may ganon. Posibleng ganon. Ang tingin ko is that kasi walang choice si President, si former President, After the speech in in the prayer rally, mm-hmm. it has to ano it has to be uh, how do you call this constantly pressuring. Hindi mm-hmm. pwedeng salita lang siya to siya abandonan niya. And hindi pwedeng yun lang ang sasabihin niya every time. So yeah. he ups the ante, tinataasan niya yung pressure because even if it doesn't come to that, what he's saying is that if you open that up, pwede rin kaming pumasok diyan. 'Di ba? Hindi lang they won't be able to control everything and even worse Pagka hindi nila inalaw yung participation of those people who don't necessarily agree with the government, then they should understand na, na you know, people will start to feel frustrated as well. And frustration has to have an outlet somehow. Mm. So, it's, so it's pressure. He's upping the ante. Now, attorney, uh, meron ng mga, no, di ba? I mean, even the president, the current president himself has uh, stated already that, you know, this people's initiative Uh, is divisive and it should be like nakusapin na niya ang members of Congress. Pero meron pa rin mga bali-balita ngayon that tuloy pa rin. Tinutuloy yeah. pa rin. Yes. Now, well, attorney, ito nga. Ako gusto ko rin ano, no? I, as, a, as an observer also, as a political ano rin, as someone who is very much interested in our politics, gusto ko talaga maintindihan, ano ba tong People's Initiative na to eh? Uh, why, why is this so like now... The, ano, no? Ito ngayon yung parang powder keg na <laughs> uh, Ito yung magpapasabog dito sa issue na to And, you know, at, at the, the way that things are going Parang kung ano man ang kalalabasan to, kahihinat na nito eh, Parang this will make or break an administration yeah. diba? So, ano ba to? Ano, I mean, mga, even mga legal luminaries uh, Nagsasabi na, you know, this is like Hindi pwede itong people's initiative Na this will, parang ito yung Uh, mag-start ng charter change this cannot be so yeah. but what is this really attorney if in in, in, in ano lang in a simple siguro someone from someone from an expert like you to say bakit ba anong ano ang why is it this issue is critical and why is it that this people's initiative or itong PI na ito uh-huh. itong PI na ito is really ano uh, can make or break Well, okay, ito yan eh. L- mm. Let's look at it for what it is first. No, okay. This is an attempt by the House of Representatives to expand their powers. Okay. Beyond that, it is also the people's initiative lang to. We're not even going to talk about what they could possibly raise later on. Pero, uh, di ba, it is a bicameral legislature. Pero pag tinignan mo yung provisions na pinapropose nila, pwede kahit House Speaker lang or Senate President ang manawagan ng pagbabago sa saligang batas. And then, Uh, voting jointly, which means that the Congress can drown out the votes kahit mag-100% ang Senado, matatalo at matatalo sila. Ngayon, according to sina Justice Carpio and Justice Aspuna, na, uh, it should the legislature should be bicameral. Okay? Yung no law can be passed nang hindi bicameral yung nag-approve niyan or dumaan niyan sa dalawang uh, kamera, two chambers. Oh. So, uh, but what they're trying to do here is create what will effectively be a unicameral form of government, unicameral ano, legislature, yeah. without actually telling us that that's what's going to happen. Kumbaga, it's simply an effect, but it does not warn us of what's going to happen. Now, the irony here is that marami kasing nakumbinsi noon that parliamentary is a good system. Ako pa nga, isa ako dyan eh, kasi I was thinking, uh-huh. no, you can change governments. Until we started, about two or three years ago, we started asking, teka muna, how do we get a parliament to change the government. In other words, magbababaan yung mga ministers who became minister of health, etc. Et yung mga ganyan. Paano sila bababa? Now, if you look carefully at the models na ginagamit ng mga proponents dito, 
yung mga models na yun, uh, they respond to public pressure. There's no mechanism basta na, na compel na lang for political survival in the next elections nitong mga representante to step down and to change yung government. Uh, and by government, of course, we, we mean the, the, the executive. Bale. So, ang sinasabi naman ni Pres former President Duterte is in the parliamentary system, pwedeng may forever. Hmm. Pwedeng, ano, prime minister sila forever, bubusog yeah. nila ng mga botante. Okay. Okay? But, so, yeah. this is what they're doing. Hmm. They're getting a prime minister, they're trying to put in a prime minister without actually saying, that we will have a unicameral parliamentary system with a de facto prime minister. Yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's what they're trying to do. Now, that is the, no, no, that, that would be the, siguro that would be the conclusion. But what I'm asking here is, itong People's Initiative itself, is this like a circumvention dun sa provision sa constitution that anything that the people would want na, or parang 3% of our uh, voting population would say, uh, they want this, uh, it can be considered. Asa ba, ano, ano bang ano nitong People's Initiative? Ano uh, ba yung, what, what, what is the basis of this? Yung basis? Well, it's in the Constitution kasi. Yeah. It's one of the three modes of uh, proposing changes to the Constitution. Okay. The Supreme Court defined it as only being, ano, uh, for the purpose of making changes that don't amount to a revision of the Constitution. So, they are just for amendments, mm -hmm. but not necessarily to change the entire system. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. But you know, the current Congress. Uh, so, ang, ang, the, the law, RA 6735, requires at least 3% of an, uh, a yes vote, kumbaga, yeah, signatures of registered voters per district. And then 12% of the total registered voters in the country, or mm -hmm. no, total registered voters, not in the country, because registered voters din ang OFWs. Eh. So 12% of the, ano? Uh, so say 60, the, million, 60 million registered voters, so 12% of that is like 8 million? Roughly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. So 8 million out of 60 million, basta makagather ka na 8 million signatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Assuming uh, na 60 million, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, well but, but the thing is... No, but that's not yet, ano, that's just to, to hold a referendum. Correct, oo. Oh. Attach sa petition mo, and then referendum. Yun, yeah. yung ano, majority. But but even this, ano nga, ito pa lang pag, pag, ito pa lang pag implement nitong People's Initiative are already like, this is already full of controversies na, ito na yung, I mean, the issue of how this is being uh, carried out. Okay. Diba? Okay. Kasi ngayon, may, may issues of bribery, may issues of, uh, you know, uh, how to obtain the signature. Eh, nakita natin, marami, marami namang, I think the last hearing with Senator Amy Marcos, may mga pinakita rin mga text messages of yung, yung ano, di ba? Parang paraan kung paano makakakuha ng mga signature na tatapatan ng ayuda and all. So, hindi siya consent. Oo. Oh, so, this is not really like getting the consent of the people. But this is really like uh, misleading the people. Yes. Diba? Parang, exactly. parang sinasabi dito, eh, kung meron gustong gawin ng kongreso, tapos tulungan yung kongreso, pero pag tulong nyo, etong kapalit. Parang ganun. Laki nga eh. Diba? So, eh, yun ang ano, yun ang isa pang, well, hindi pa yun masyadong nahihimay, authority, but the, the, I think the, the budget is a very, ano, no? I mean, staggering to say the least. Oo, oo. Diba? Diba? The rumors, grabe talaga. Daming zeros nun, ha? Uh, Eh, well, kung sinabi nga natin kung kailangan nila ng 8 million, tapos, di ba sinabi ang budget is 5,000 per? Yeah. Medyo? Uh -huh. Kaso, wow. para, yeah, 5,000 nga daw, tapos ang umaabot lang talaga doon sa tao is less than 2,000. Correct, correct. Lumigit so, okay. ko pala sa palad ng ibang tao, no? Oo, so may mga middleman pa pala. <laughs> may ano pa pala, <laughs> tong, may, may, may mga broker pa. Very enterprising. But imagine, I mean, for 8 million... Uh, at, at ano na lang ha? sa 1,008 million, magkano yun? 1,008, ano? Eh, one, 8 million times 1,000 pesos. So you add three zeros to 8 million. 800 million. That's 800 million. No, 8 oh, million. Sorry, 8 sorry. Million? 8 billion. 8 billion. Kasi three zeros. Ah. 8 billion? My God. So, huh? kung 2,016 billion, kung 3,024 billion, hmm, O, oh, di ba? 
24 billion yung pwede nilang ibulsa in ibig. So, di ba saan nga galing yan? Where did that money come from? Yan ba yung ano? Un unprogrammed? Oh, 500. Uh, according to Senator Pimentel, ang unprogrammed funds total amounts to about 731 billion. Billion? Oh, tapos yung ayuda fund is half a trillion. So, 500 billion. 500 Take billion. Oh, meron pa tayong ano ha, wag makakalimutan. Meron pa tayong PCS. Oh. <laughs> si Lone Vetor. Ang tumutunan. <laughs> Di ba? Ay, jakko. Oh. Ay. <laughs> no, you can't help but think it, eh, 'di ba? Yeah. Naiisip mo talaga 'yan. <laughs> Hindi, saka I mean, for them to spend something like that. Correct. Makes you really want to or to it parang it's now clear that they are really wanting this or oh, they really want this no so, isipin mo the, the effort that it would take to source and move that money that requires an administrative structure anong gagamitin mo well, they all have a ready made structure ang sabi ni senator Amy, paano yung ididinay e puro staff niya yung nag ano <laughs> ang gumagalaw dito hindi nga nakakapaw nga eh kasi Yung, yung sinasabing lead convener <laughs> na, alam mong, I mean, I think he's really a veteran na, political, ano, no, a uh, veteran political. Oh. Alam mo yung, nagkakautal-utal na <laughs> bigla. Yeah. Mahirap yan. Na, siguro, na. siguro talagang pag bilyon na pinag-uusapan, talagang magkakautal-utal. <laughs> Di ba? Oo, oh, hindi lang yun. Kung ano, kung hindi mo maalala kung ano yung dapat mong, ano, yung script mo, Oh, <laughs> uh, the infamous, uh, it slipped my mind, your own. Yeah. <laughs> Kung hindi pinasita ni Senator Amy yung picture na yan, ay dure-diretso yung hirit, hirit ang nila dyan. It slipped my mind. But, but, uh, Tony, ano ang ano mo dyan? I mean, what is your take on that na ganitong nag unravel na itong mga to? And I think we have to thank Senator Amy for that na kumbaga parang siya ngayon ng front and center in all of this and really unmasking mm -hmm. this ano and siguro ano pa eh may mga part 2 pa may kasunod pa tong hearing uh, mm -hmm. yeah what, where do you think this is going and uh, how sh how are we really supposed to react on this well ganito yan ano um a lot of people are tired of this administration. So one of two things can come out of this. Either ma-realize ng mga major players ng administration na ito na they cannot do everything that they want. Kung baga, kung, kung ito ay isang spoiled child na kausap mo, this is the first reality check for that spoiled child. So, and posibleng magbago sila. On the other hand, they could refuse to learn their lessons and people's frustrations will still mount. Either way, it's not looking good for them. Diba? Mm. Uh, ako, I have hopes that ma-realize nila na okay, okay, let's not do this. Diba? Ang greatest danger na nakikita natin, kaya napilitan magsalita, isang retirado ng presidente, nagsasalita pa, sabi niya, well, the greatest danger is this uh, attempt at charter change kasi it, it condemns future generations to this leadership. In other words, we will be just Allowing the replication of this administration for generations to come. So, halata na, ine-expose naman yung purpose ng, ano, eh, ng charter change dito. It's really just to perpetuate themselves in power. Right? Bula, hindi, maniwala ka dyan sa economic provisions na yan, di ba? Meron bang naniniwala na yan ang gagawin nila? Even if they do that, they're going to reserve some part where they can still come in and change their terms. Mm -hmm. Malabas din naman yung mga term extension talk na ganyan eh. So, well, I'm sure yun yun naman ba? talaga yung ano doon, di ba? Yun yeah, naman yun talaga. Yun yung dito, or isang puzzle dito. Uh -huh. Sa the push for this charter change via this people's initiative. Is how far really does this go? Or sino talaga? I mean... How far are you willing to take this? No, I mean, how far was this like conceptualized and who really is the one pushing for this? Kasi we, we were... We were like, uh, at first glance, parang sinasabi natin, the president, parang siya pa yung nagulat. Yung unang balita, di ba, na, nung nag-meeting niya si Sobiri, parang, uh -huh. oh, 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 may balitaan ko nga, napanood ko sa news, meron daw ganitong people, parang ganun yung ano niya eh, ganun ang, ang posisyon niya na, and you know, this is divisive nga, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, there are now, 
uh, revelations, and I think even Senator Army has this, ano, no, yung merong kumalat na text, that all along, the President knows about this. And he is actually, like, behind. I mean, not behind, but he, he knows about it. Yeah. And he has been, like, if he is silent about it, and it's already, like, a raging controversy, and still he's not, like, putting his foot down. So, yun ang ano ngayon. Yun ang parang naging kasama sa palaisipan ngayon na alam to ng presidente and parang mukhang gusto rin to ng presidente. Well, it looks that way. Although, ganito yan, no? his leadership has been characterized by, ano, eh, by non-responses. <laughs> Di mo napansin? Di ba? Yeah. Uh, let's see, the Secretary of the Department of Natural Resources, the mm -hmm. Environment and Natural Resources, says, we're losing the war on plastics, etc. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. ang dami dami issues. Yeah. And walang accomplishment, di ba? Um, nothing. The president doesn't say anything. And therefore, it's it's assent by silence. So if you, you're letting it happen. So um, the Congress, his cousin, pushes this. And the association causes unpopularity in both uh, Malacanang and Batasan. He says nothing. So silence is assent in this case. But, he gives lip service, possibly because it's Senator Zibiri, na, yeah, yeah, I think that ano, it's getting out of hand, I think that it's divisive, and so on. But he hasn't put his foot down. He hasn't said, okay, enough of this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, after all, the president, you can tell uh, Mr. Romuald is that. It's not doing I mean, he's the president, but the way that things are going right now, parang, you, you cannot help but think, diba, that maybe he's really the one. I mean, it's not really the speaker, it's not really Congress, but, you know, it's really Malacanang who's into this. And unfortunately for Speaker Martin, siya yung nagiging ano ngayon. Uh, I mean, you just can't say no to the speaker. Well, yes, oh, yun nga, yeah, ngayon, diba? Uh, no, but hindi nga eh, kasi siya presidente. Yeah, nga eh. And, and I think more than anyone else, siya yung makikinabang pa rin kung, kung meron term extension. Uh -huh. Diba? I mean, yeah. hindi kaya parang pinangakuhan siya na, oh, basta pag nangyari to, you are perpetually in power for as long as you like. Exactly. Pero, you, know, know? So, uh, you know what's worse? Yeah. Is that the people already know. May stado na, alam na. Uh -oh. It's out there. And you they're turning a deaf ear to it. Parang ang feeling yata nila, they have time. Or all they have to do is, you know, let's keep this quiet. Let's let the public uproar pass. Tapos tuloy natin ulit. Which I think is insulting talaga. So, I cannot blame the former president for freaking out like that. Diba? And continuing to rail against it. He's not going to stop. Because they are not stopping. Yeah, well, yung... And the former president, I think, is coming from a place then... Uh, and I can also understand. Because, unang-una, uh, sila mismo tinitira eh. Siya mismo. Siya mismo, eh, merong, merong pang ano sa kanya eh. May pinang, uh, pinampatakot sa kanya, no? Merong, merong but, uh, tanggal uh, sa kanya. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, ano, we, we know why, why they want to diminish the Duterte influence. Oh. Now, <clears throat> ngayon, attorney, with all of these things happening, uh, I think, kahapon or kanina, may lumabas na si Gringo Honasan. Yeah, yeah. Na naglabas siya ng statement that, you know, Parang gusto niyang sabihin doon sa dalawang partido, the former president and the current president, that, you know, they should sit down and uh, <clears throat> iron out these uh, differences and this, yung bickerings and public, ano, no? Public uh, exchange. <clears throat> and is this, is this like already, to you, is this something that would be parang cause alarm or, or would trigger? No, okay. I don't think so. You know why? Because hmm. he ran with the uni team. Okay. Uh, he wouldn't have to make a very public pronouncement kung sakasakali. So, um... Yeah, knowing, ano, knowing how his background, his uh, experience... In... That's exactly why I'm saying no. Eh. <laughs> no, because, um... How do I say this nicely? I'm trying to be nice. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the his history. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, supposedly encouraging people to into uprisings and then yes. oh. uh, negotiating after that. Oh. Uh, so, yung ganon, uh, it will make me think twice kung may bit-bit siya. Ayun, if, if, if there is any influence on this. But you're right in the sense that we cannot ignore. Nagsalita siya. And he yeah. does represent some people. In other words, he does still have a following. So, kumbaga, what he's saying is this, this is no longer good. It's not going in the right direction. So, uh -huh. be informed. Parang ganon. Now, we don't know what he's going to do with this show. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. It could mean uh, may, ano, may, there are people he's talking to. I, I think yung tama yung pinupoint out mo that the fact that he spoke, the, the, the fact that he has publicly appeared, dahil, pwede naman hindi, di ba? Pwede naman siyang yeah, yeah, mahimik. Yeah. Pwede naman ano. But, but that, that move alone, that, that uh, declaring or that uh, going in public mm. and saying something and knowing his background mm. is something that we should like take as no, no. No, take it for what it is. Uh -huh. that, that there are already like alarm bells, that there are already uh, discontent, uh -huh. that there's already like a disturbance in the force, mm. so to speak. Di ba? Parang, uh -huh. eh, parang the Republic is now, uh, there's grumbling. In the Republic. Correct. And uh, our leaders now should really heed and take note of this. Because the moment that, you know, this thing, ito, si gringo pa lang yan. What if, you know. And remember, during the prayer rally, our former president also called upon the military uh, to protect the Constitution. Not for anything else, not, not citing anything, not uh, pushing anything, but, but, you know, reminding the military because, kasi nga, may mga extra-constitutional moves na eh. Yeah. Palabas eh. And, and, attorney, kahapon o kanina rin yung balita that yung perceived growth in our economy yeah. did not really happen in 2023. Yeah. Diba? Meaning, yung sinasabing target growth rate of about 7%, hindi na-achieve. And yeah. we, we registered something like what? 5.6 lang ba yun? Mm -hmm. huh? 5.6 as against the as I guess, the target of 6.5 or 6.4 na target. So, hindi po. And that is also, now, an indication that, you know, yung mga sinasabing achievements, accomplishments, are really hollow. Mm -hmm. Are really, parang... Headless nga, eh, di ba? <laughs> oo, and... Headless. <laughs> and, alam nyo, pagka po ang nagalaw na o ang naapektuhan na ang mga tiyan natin, mm -hmm. pamumuhay natin, ang pang-araw-araw natin, Eh, tapos makikita natin, party-party. <laughs> and, you know, biyahe-biyahe. Right. Uh, I think, ano po yan? Uh -huh. eh, eh, talaga may mga tao pong kikilos. Hmm. Diba? And, yun nga, yung binanggit din to ng ating dating Pangulo, na wag naman sanang mangyari, na yung nangyari sa tatay, eh, mangyayari din sa anak. Because that is really like, uh, a very cruel ano no historic no uh, that's a very cruel cruel history uh -huh. so attorney uh yes. the final words po for tonight na dahil we are now at 7:53 at ang haba alam mo talaga pagka maganda yung usapan hindi natin okay. mamamatay but some ano po some words for our audience right now when it, when it comes to the former president you know we have to be very uh how do you call this we have to listen carefully because he's a lawyer, he chooses his words very carefully. So if he says he's looking into something, he's really looking into something. Doesn't mean that it's going to be achieved, but you understand that, well, that he has motive and he has direction. So that's good news for him all around. The fact that he's talking means that he's also giving a chance to this administration that, no, you're going to have to change things around. We, we can no longer, we, we the people, or the people can no longer take what you are showing us. Kasi, alam tara niyan eh, isipin mo, Ano, buto mong mga tao nag para sa branding. Kakaiba talaga yun. So, so ikumaga, it, it's it's an act of friendship that the former president is actually giving a warning shot. So, he could very well have just let the, the whole administration slide down. He hasn't done that. But we must be listening, all of us, the administration and the rest of us also. We have to take our cue from that. And also, let's not put too much meaning in the plain words that the former president has addressed, the issue is charter change. And if he can cause more pressure in order to, to stop this insanity, 
then he's going to do that. So I think we should thank him. And we should thank you, Attorney. Uh, Attorney Trixie Cruz Angres, mga kababayan, live po. At maraming maraming salamat, Attorney, for guesting in our program in a very short notice. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, namimiss ka na namin sa karambola. Uh, uh, sana bumalik ka na on air na mas bongga. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and with that mga kababayan, natapos na naman po ang isang episode ng Pugat Vloggers. Ito po ang inyong lingkod si Mark Lopez. Kasama po natin sila Attorney Darwin Cañete, Attorney Tom Berenguel, sila Maricar Tentay Mahalis Ran, si Doc Ethel Pineda, si Professor Bani Bienas, and si Orion Perez D. Uh, ito po ang Pugat Vloggers, Monday to Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Dito po sa DZRJ, 8, 10 a.m. Teleradio Bandido. We are simulcast sa mga DTT boxes, GMA for the box, and in other cable channels. And we are also being live stream po simultaneously sa YouTube and Facebook. Hanapin nyo lang ang DZRJ, 8, 10 a.m. Radio Bandido YouTube and Facebook channels. And also merong mga apps like Streama, Radio Garden, and TuneIn Apps. Pwede nyo rin mapakinggan dyan ang programa po ng Pugat Vloggers at iba pa sa DZRJ Radio Bandito once again thank you Attorney Trixie kita kits tayo and good night God bless everyone maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga sumubaybay sa atin sa studio dito po sa ating online show and everybody who made the comments kumusta po sa inyo maraming maraming salamat po and good night God bless everyone Pat